Hello, and welcome to Haywood HealthBeat. I'm Mike Ellis. Our program, Haywood HealthBeat, brings you information on the health issues that affect you, your family, and our community the most. Throughout this year, you're going to hear from a number of speakers that are going to talk to you about relevant, pertinent, and timely topics. Today, I have the pleasure of having with me Mary Beth Sharon. Mary Beth is the director of the Center for Weight Loss and Bariatric Surgery at Haywood Hospital. Mary Beth is also an esteemed author of the book, My Hungry Heads. We're going to talk a little bit today about what Mary Beth does and why uh, bariatric surgery mm -hmm. and weight loss is such a kind of important issue. Um, what's going on in our community that makes um, this program so important at Haywood? Well, at Haywood, in your community, um, you, your community actually does better than the national average, believe it or not. That's great. The national average of obesity right now is pushing towards 40% across the country. Wow. Gardner area in central Massachusetts is hovering somewhere around 25, 26%, but that's still a huge number. It's still a huge number. Most of those people will start to develop type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, which is going to severely impact their ability to function as they get older, um, particularly when they start moving into their 40s and 50s, um, they start to see a lot of these issues come up. So as a community, it affects our families, it affects our health personally, but it affects our ability to work, right? it affects our economy. So it's a, it's a huge complex system problem that we have to address. I think that's really interesting that you talk about the direct relationship between obesity and, say, productivity and mm -hmm. the workforce, mm -hmm. that these health issues aren't just about, you know, the, an individual having right. some struggles, that it really is about also their families and their neighborhoods mm -hmm. um, and, of course, the workforce and being able to work and being productive right. and not having sick time. And so if we look at that, if we talk about just this idea of obesity in the community, why, why do we have a center? Why, you know, and what's the focus of the center? Right, so the center's focus really is to shepherd a patient through the process of getting healthier. We right now have a system that has a lot of people involved in it. So if you have, we'll just go with a couple diseases, right? So say you just have diabetes, type 2 diabetes, you may be seeing your primary care physician, you may be seeing an endocrinologist. Um, if that disease progresses, you may be seeing a cardiologist. So there's a lot of different people that will become part of your healthcare system. And that can get confusing. That wow. can get really confusing. And each part of that healthcare system is going to try to get you to lose weight. <laughs> They're going to try to get you to eat less and exercise more. Um, but unfortunately, that is not that easy. Most people know that they need to eat less and exercise more. That's no big secret. So it's, why doesn't that work? Why don't people do that? And you can't accomplish dealing with that in a 15 minute visit with your primary care physician. It's right. not anyone's fault. It's the way the system is. The primary care physicians are just at their max. Um, specialists are starting to get at their max. So to have a center where we can come in and completely look at you as a whole person, all of your meds, all of your blood work, all of the functionings of all of your systems and kind of put that together with all of your um, healthcare providers and then try to develop the, the best approach for you, how, how to get rid of these diseases or prevent yourself from getting there. Um, Mary Beth, it's no secret. Mm -hmm. I've been around this community a long time, and I've struggled with, um, mm -hmm. you know, periods of weight gain for right. seemingly no reason. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't binge on cupcakes or chocolate, mm -hmm. and um, this idea, the notion that it's eat less, um, exercise more. There's more to it than that, and that's right. one thing I think the center has really. Um, been very successful at doing mm -hmm. is helping people understand the dynamic of um, weight gain and right. weight loss. So what are some of the other things that affect 
a person's mm -hmm. weight? So, of course, it's genetics. So we have genetics behind us, and, you know, some of us get the lucky genes. Um, I call the lucky genes the genes that you can actually keep weight on. Weight's important. Fat is important for people. So if we think back, you know, 10,000 years, the skinny people didn't make it. They had a really tough time. Um, the people who had the obesity gene back then, they did really well. Like, they sort of ruled the jungle back then. The problem is that the jungle's changed. <laughs> the landscape has changed. Right. So we don't move as much as we, I mean, think about just all of the food that's av available to us. We probably only need to get out of our car twice or out of our bed twice to eat. We just have to get up and get into a car, drive around all day. We could eat all day long and go back from our car to our bed and we would be fine. So that's not the way our, the human body's constructed. It doesn't want to behave that way. So we really need to look at, you know, what's changed and how do we deal with that landscape. So a lot of my work in the center and with the book My Hungry Head, it was really about this is not one or two things. This isn't about moving more and eating less. This is about how do we manage this complex system that we have, right, within our bodies in relation to the environment that we now live in. Right. right? Yeah. What a Unbelievable perspective, right? right? Without Probably. beating ourselves up <laughs> right. all day long. Yeah. All right, when now you, you've just really <laughs> kind right? of When your doctor tells you you should eat more and exercise less, like you've said, you've tried that. You've done that before. Well, my doctor's <laughs> never told me to eat more, exercise less. It's always <laughs> eat, eat less, less and ex exercise, exercise more. more. Right. But there are some people who are lucky enough to get that message. But interestingly, some people don't eat enough and right. they struggle with obesity. So it's there's not a one-size-fits-all piece, and that's why within the center we have to build in that time and thinking process with a patient to say, like, what is it about you, your body, your background, your lifestyle, right, that is causing you or keeping you at this particular weight, causing you to gain weight or keeping you at a weight? I find it interesting. We've been talking a lot about the weight loss side mm -hmm. of the equation, but I think it's the more and most important part of what the center does. There's mm -hmm. also the bariatric surgery part. Mm -hmm. um, Mary Beth, at what point in time should somebody think about or would bariatric surgery be appropriate for someone to think right. about in their lives? Right. Well, when you have dieted, many most people who come to the ba the weight loss center, they have lost weight multiple times. So every time you lose weight, you put yourself in a position where you're probably going to regain weight when you go back to whatever happens. Say that again for our viewers, because yeah. I think that's a, uh, mm -hmm. a message we don't really hear that much. Right. Um, it, and we don't talk about it that much yeah. because the diet industry is incredibly powerful. Um, think about the commercial weight loss programs that are out there. We, we all know many of them. If everyone went to that program once and lost weight and was able to keep it off, they wouldn't have a business. It wouldn't be an $11 billion business, right? So there's a system within our body that wants to stay at a certain weight. Every time we diet and lose weight quickly in this get weight off quick schemes, whatever they may be, the body wants to push back to the original weight. So you actually start to gain weight and you actually probably, most people, become hungrier. Hmm. So there's a set of hormones that will push you to want to eat more. So yeah. You just brought up that uh, part, and so I have had the pleasure of being part of the Center for Weight mm -hmm. Loss and Bariatric mm -hmm. Surgery. The education information is incredible. This idea that hormones and chemicals play mm -hmm. an important part in a person feeling satisfied or mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. interacting with insulin and you know we know that there are a lot of folks who are overweight that um, develop type 2 diabetes. Right. I never realized right. that. Can you talk a little bit about um, you know briefly about how all of that plays mm -hmm. a part in people's weight gain yeah, and weight loss? Absolutely. Um, we have a, a very complex system of hormones and communicators within our body that work between our gut and our head. And the goal of those, that communication system, is to make us eat. If we don't eat, we will die. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Again, this is all based on 
you know, our body had no idea we were going to have Dunkin' Donuts, Wendy's, and Taco Bell all like within three seconds of each other. So where food is scarce, your body needs to figure out how to conserve energy. It needs to conserve fat because fat is good. We just don't want too much fat. So right now our country and our, a lot of us have too much fat. So the body is going to push us to eat. Often we ignore it for some reason or multiple reasons. One of the big reasons is we start our day with coffee. Well, this is water, but uh, we start our days with coffee. Caffeine will decrease the appetite. But there are hormones that are going to say, hey, we're not really getting what we want, and it's going to push you to want to eat more. So let's couple that with, I'm a really good worker, and I'm just going to keep plowing through my day. And 3 o'clock comes around, I haven't eaten lunch. By the time you eat lunch, you've already built a huge store of hormones that are saying, eat, eat, eat. And you're also not going to feel as satisfied. So we have hormones that tell us to eat and hormones that tell us we're satisfied. Right. So we mess with those <laughs> ourselves <laughs> right? yeah. by the nature of, uh, you know, who we are, how we work, our work ethics, um, some of the ways we start our day. Um, so often the people who come to me in the weight in the weight center often do not eat until late in the day, like 3, 30, 4, 30, 5, 30. And they'll eat a lot at that time, and rightfully so, because they have a little hormone, one of them called ghrelin, that will say, eat, eat, you know, I've been waiting all day for this, let's go. Right? And then we overeat, and it's gonna take a while for our brain to catch up that we, we have satisfied our body. And during that time, we're already watching TV, and that's when the commercials come on, and that's when we get up during a commercial and start get watching. Get that snack food. <laughs> get that snack food. I, I find that really interesting, yeah. and so, um, this, this complexity of balancing when you eat and how you eat right. uh, with your, you know, natural uh, chemicals mm -hmm. was always a problem for me. I, I never mm -hmm. ate breakfast. I never ate lunch. Yeah. And then, you know, being, uh, you know, the good Irish man that I am, <laughs> right. I'd go home and have, have my meat and potatoes. potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and never really realized that just that alone can so dramatically and drastically affect Absolutely. Um, you know, weight loss or weight gain. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, at a basic level, we're really um, sending our blood sugars in a very bad direction. Yeah. In a very bad direction. Um, and then when we advance to more complicated diseases like diabetes, um, often to regulate that blood sugar, may cause the other parts of your hormones to be a bit um, maybe not as effective yeah. as they could be. So we often see weight gain with some of those very things that are supposed to keep us healthier and alive. Um, and it's that catch, it's like a catch-22. You know, so blood sugars go up. You need more insulin. Right. As you what take do we more insulin, you get hungrier. <laughs> right. So right. what do we have? You know, one of the um, things that, like, I love endocrinologists. They're like some of my favorite people, and the work they do is amazing. But all of us have a limited set of tools. So when it comes to things like diabetes or um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, it's very difficult to control those with just medicine alone right. or some of the treatments alone. And that certainly has been, mm -hmm. I think, the mentality or perspective of the patient mm -hmm. is, right. geez, you know, all right, so I have type 2 diabetes, so I'll just take mm -hmm. more insulin without really knowing that mm -hmm. the insulin is going to cause, could potentially cause and more likely right. cause weight gain, which will just exacerbate mm -hmm. all of those things, exactly. diabetes and blood pressure. Exactly. And Sleep is another big one. People don't realize yeah. the effect of um, sleep, sleeping too much or too little, may affect the satiety um, receptors in your brain. So you're like, why am I always hungry? Like, why am I always hungry? And you just can't figure it out. So wh what's the natural thing to think, uh, what's wrong with me that I can't control my hunger? And then you start feeling bad, and then when you feel bad, you want to eat. Right. <laughs> so you're just yeah. caught in this horrible cycle. It, it's just, it really <laughs> is, um, you know, an eye-opener. It has mm -hmm. been an eye-opener for me. Let's go back to the bariatric mm -hmm. part then. So yeah. what are the elements that somebody should 
think about before considering bariatric surgery? Like right. why is it good for some people and not good for others? Right. So from our perspective, um, we come from it from a very medical perspective. So weight loss for us is not cosmetic. It's not to make yourself thinner. That may be a result at the end and you may feel really good about yourself. But for, as far as the Center for Weight Loss and Bariatric Surgery, we're really looking at health issues. Um, what do you have that you can't control on your own or with medicines? Um, what is your diet history like? So we're really looking at people who have struggled to keep weight off over a period of time. Um, we're also looking for people who have, um, or people who qualify for our program, would have about 100 pounds or more to lose. Wow. Right? Oh. And it is not difficult to have 100 pounds to nope. lose, believe it or not. That's maybe an extra serving of potatoes every day for 10 years. A couple extra Cokes every day for 10 years. So we're not really seeing people who are gorging and binging like some people think. Um, that is not really the case. So someone who's really had a hard time getting weight off and keeping it off is a great candidate. Someone who has diabetes, type 2 diabetes particularly, will benefit dramatically. Right now this is the only, like gastric bypass for example, is really the only tool we have across our nation and the world to put diabetes, type hmm. 2 diabetes in some type of remission. Right? That is it. I mean originally this was a a metabolic surgery. So we are a metabolic and weight loss center. So some people have metabolic issues, like diabetes, um, is a great candidate. Some people who have lost weight over and over, um, I was telling a story about a couple patients of mine who have lost 100 pounds over 10 times. Wow. So that's a thousand pounds they have lost over a lifetime. Wow. There's nothing wrong with the, this person's willpower. So willpower is not an issue. Um, and, and obviously eating less and exercising more didn't do it either. So it's, it's the kind of um, patient who can't keep that weight off. That's who we want to see. Yeah. Does the center offer um, additional support services for mm -hmm. folks who have, are struggling with weight? Right. Um, but aren't quite ready yet to commit to uh, yes, surgery. Yes, absolutely. So um, we are not a surgery center only. Um, we are a metabolic and bariatric surgery. So um, we look at how do we help someone maintain a good metabolic system. So uh, many of our patients, they may come to us and say, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to have surgery. And they might not be right for it at that time or they decide it's too much for them, but they're still part of our program medically. We'll still follow them medically, make sure their vitamins are, um, in check, all their blood work is in good good shape. If it's not, we can work with their primary care physicians. We have a behavioral side um, that we do work with our patients in terms of getting the head and the stomach to communicate a little better together. Um, we have a six-week program where we open it to the community and actually hospitals all over Central Mass who have patients who live in this area um, but can't like drive to Worcester. Right for once a month or whatever it might be. So we do have a behavioral program and we also work on the, I don't want to use the word exercise, I'd rather use the word movement. Like how can you move in a way that you enjoy that will work for you over a lifetime? You know, it's funny, you say the exercise and you know, make this, this comment or, or observation to some is a dirty word. It's a terrible it's word. It's scary and mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, they get frustrated with right. or feel like it's not an obligation. Mm -hmm. um, so I love the fact that we change that dynamic so that people right. can change their perspective about how mm -hmm. moving can be healthy. Absolutely. Interestingly, I just saw a patient um, who lost 62 pounds. She has not had surgery. She's part of our program. She lost 62 pounds. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? And she's like, I just gave up the exercise thing. I'm not doing it. I just dance. I just <laughs> dance. I just like dance around the house. Then she bought waterproof earphones or something. Um, and she dances in the water if her legs are hurting her. So she just goes in the pool and she starts jamming out. Um, but she's lost 62 pounds with a combination awesome. of all of those elements of the program and her accepting that she doesn't have to do it a certain way. She can do it her way. Let's give a gratuitous plug for my hungry head. Um, <laughs> okay because that's the program that uh, mm -hmm. you know, folks go and they learn a bunch of stuff. What are some of the key um, 
you know, issues, topics that are discussed in My Hungry Head. So My Hungry Head, um, that program was born out of a group of patients that I decided to look at and evaluate. So I looked at 7,600 weight loss patients. So I had a big sample. And I tried to figure out what are these people doing? Um, what are the successful people doing? What is it, what are the core things that they focus on? So one of the big things with My Hungry Head that we learned from these groups, we did multiple, multiple uh, focus groups and qualitative data and trying to figure out, you know, what are those key success factors. Overall, one of the, the main pieces of that is knowing it's not just you. Right. It's not your fault. There's nothing wrong with you as a person. You just haven't figured out the right way yet right. for you, right? You know, what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. So that's sort of the overarching um, helping patients break through the diet prison because they're imprisoned by, I have to do it a certain way. I have to eat a certain thing. Uh, and that certain thing can be who knows what. It changes every time BuzzFeed sends out a new you know, article about what to eat. So it's starting first with the patient is an individual and we need to figure out what works for them. And then we look at things like, what is your eating habits like? What are those cycles like? So some people call it journaling. Some people call it, you know, recording their diet history. I call it more data collection for helping people act like scientists for themselves, like really like examining what happens, when does it happen, what's going on around when it happens, what is the food that's going in my body, because that also has a huge effect. The food industry has a very powerful effect over whether we feel satisfied by what we eat and, um, and how much we eat. So we do work on that part. We do um, take a peek at the hormones and how the body works. Most people who come to my classes um, often don't even know where their stomach is located. They usually like think it's much lower than it is. So it's getting acquainted with your body. Um, we go through the hormone pieces and then we look at how to retrain the brain in an effective way and in a realistic way. Um, and then we look at you know what are the real problems behind what causes you to eat. So it usually isn't, I'm just hungry. You know, there's other reasons why. So those are some of those key things that yeah, those that are, we focus on. Are pretty pretty they're, they're deep subjects. Yeah. They're deep. So if somebody were, say, considering mm -hmm. um, the fact that maybe they need to lose weight, but they aren't sure that they want to do the bariatric surgery, mm -hmm. um, they can still participate in my hungry head. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where can they get information about that? So they can call our clinic. Um, they can call Haywood Hospital. It's on their website. Um, they can call our clinic at 978-630-6130. Say that again for me. Yep, 978-630-6130. Okay, great. Um, they can look at My Hungry Head um, communities. So if they scan Facebook, there's many My Hungry Head communities that are out there being taught by other successful people who have learned to control their hungry head. Yeah. The center's been around for how long? Well, the center has been in Haywood since 2017 is when we first opened. We saw a couple people at the end of 2016 when we were starting to ramp up. But we're, so it's new to Haywood in some respects, but we're not new to bariatrics and weight loss surgery. We've been around for, for quite a while. Yeah, tell me a little bit about the yeah. staff at the center. So the staff is, um, we work under the direction of Dr. Nari Sabeti, and she's a fellowship trained surgeon. So when I met Dr. Sabeti, she already um, had 300 bariatric cases under her belt before she left her, her fellowship. Wow. So that is a huge amount of cases. Um, so since through her practice, she's done well over a thousand. Um, She's a general surgeon and a bariatric surgeon. And then we have a staff of physician assistants, um, dietitians, um, behavioral health, which, which is my specialty, and navigators. So we have someone to navigate you through the system because it can be very confusing um, how to deal with all of these appointments or doctors or, or primary cares and all of that. So we try to help navigate that. Um, so Dr. Sabeti is, um, she's pretty darn good surgeon, obviously, we've been around for, for quite a while. So between both of us, um, I think since I got to Haywood, I've now seen 8,200 patients Holy since cow. I started in weight loss wow. surgery and weight loss in general. 
I think your description of the staff really tells a story that um, the Center for Weight Loss and Bariatric Surgery mm -hmm. isn't just about going in and going under no. the, the scalpel no. that you have um, behavioral health people, you mm -hmm. have nutritionists and right. you know caseworkers, right. case managers, which I are really the nice. other piece that's very special about this community is we have communities of patients who are banded together and who have educated themselves through us and through other resources that we've helped them with to help others. So there's there's this very, very tight community and that's quite special that we have found up in this area. So between, we've worked in many different programs in Boston, um, Winchester, Lowell, um, down in Concord. We've worked in, all of us have worked in different programs. And there's something very special about this community. We hear that. Do you I, hear I it? so many I'm different like, I love points this of contact. <laughs> um, very generous community, hardworking community. Hardworking. Really, I, yeah, yes. special. It's unique. So, you know, not, like I said earlier, one size isn't going to fit all. So our program is really designed around, you know, if you are if you want to work, we're, we're going to help you. So, and it's really a joy for us to be able to say like, yeah, we have these programs, but this might not work for you. Let's try this over here. And then to have a group of patients who have really banded together incredibly well, surgical and non-surgical, who have banded together well to really help support each other long term. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, I'm just very grateful to work in the community like this. And I would suggest that that is part of the success of, you know, these folks' journey through, you know, weight loss is right. that support network. It's, it's yeah, it's a yeah. very, very tight piece. Um, do, I have two, two questions mm -hmm. that I really am interested in. We talked a little bit about uh, medication, medication mm -hmm. management, and how weight gain yes. affects and impacts not only um, the quantity or the dosage of mm -hmm. medication, but the number of medications. Mm -hmm. So how does weight right. loss affect that? <laughs> well, um, in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. So most patients who lose weight significantly, and I'll, I'll talk more from the bariatric surgical side first, um, most are off their diabetes medications and their high blood pressure medications within two weeks. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you think about yeah. that plethora of, of drugs and right. pharmaceuticals and medications that people take we just see to lists. try to, yeah, to manage mm -hmm. that. And certainly they, they can't all be positive effects or like long term. Right. So to be able to, to right. get off of um, and those expensive. medications. And it's expensive, it's right? It's expensive. Yeah. So I had mentioned earlier, it's, it's our most effective tool to manage type 2 diabetes right now. It, yeah. It's a bit magical. Um, we're learning as a community, as a medical community, all the different aspects as to why this is happening and why something like a gastric bypass or a sleeve can actually change the way your body communicates around hunger and satiety, which is why most people who lose weight, like 100 pounds or more, have a better chance of keeping that off with these tools because it's, we don't just cause an environment where you can eat less, but it's how the brain and stomach communicate together right. and how that ecosystem is working. Um, so it's pretty amazing. So um, even with type 1 diabetes, um, we have seen people go from insulin just to medication. Um, so it has a very, very significant impact. Most people are off their sleep, their CPAPs for sleep apnea, their sleeping machines. Um, they're off those within a month or so. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. It, it is pretty incredible. Um, and so when you think about this, about mm -hmm. you know weight loss, again, it's not a punishment, folks. I want to just let you know that this center has been very successful at helping people navigate through that journey, a difficult journey when right. you look at all of the complexity that's involved with chemicals and mm -hmm. hormones mm -hmm. and processed foods. Right. I learned a lot. Uh, you recommended a book, and again, a gratuitous plug, Salt, Sugar, Fat, yes. um, which has book. absolutely nothing to do with with dieting or exercise and has right. to do with like the food industry and how right. processed foods can really affect mm -hmm. our weight. A great book, uh, My Hungry Head uh, is available mm -hmm. also. Uh, folks, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that dynamic of weight gain and weight loss, mm -hmm. um, check those two resources out and give Mary Beth and her staff a call at the Center mm -hmm. for Weight Loss and Bariatric Surgery. The last question I have mm -hmm. is, um, 
is the center now accredited as a center for excellence? Yes. Um, we've and been what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean is right. Um, so we went through a process at Haywood Hospital to become an accredited center, a comprehensive center. So what that means is the College of American Surgeons has come into our hospital and evaluated us on many, many levels. So it's not just our program or just our surgeon, but it's the way the hospital cares for people, um, our programs, um, how we support people before surgery and after surgery, what our outcomes are like. So they'll look at our numbers in terms of medications. How many people came off their medications? How many complications do we have? Um, so we run a very conservative program. Um, when we came here, it's our style. It's how we work. Um, I think many people could go to another program and get through much quicker um, than they could with us, but it's a very comprehensive program that we've set up. And then we just received, um, two months ago, our designation as a comprehensive center. So awesome. it was awesome. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Um, and that it really talks about standards, that the standards it's are a standard very high. That, yes, yep. yeah. And Dr. Sabetti's led the way with, um, uh, with those standards. She does not bend on them. And I don't think anything's wrong with that. I think those are the kind of surgeons you want to work for and those are the kind of surgeons you want to work with you. Um, so we do have a higher level of standards than some patients would like. You know, they're just like, why can't I just do this now? I finally decided now you're going to make me do all these things. But these things are in place for a certain reason. And to be recognized for that by outside surgeons from the College of American Surgeons to say like, yes, you are pointed in the right direction um, is great. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And it, it, again, speaks well of Haywood Hospital as an institution, the type of services and programs yes. they provide to our community. So you guys do a great job. Um, Mary Beth, let's give folks that number again. Yes, so the number um, to reach us is 978-630-6130. We also have information nights if you just want to come and meet Dr. Sabetti or myself. Um, those are on our, our website Great. at haywoodhospital.org. Haywood.org. Haywood.org. Yep. And you can come anytime. Uh, if you can't make it to an information session, then you are more than welcome just to make an appointment with me and I can talk through your options if you've been struggling with your weight and your you've been really having a tough time. So we can look at what options you might have available. And there are a lot of folks out there that struggle, that really they struggle yes. um, with uh, particularly weight gain and mm -hmm. then trying to lose mm -hmm. that weight. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we've been uh, speaking with Mary Beth Sharon, the director of the Center for Weight Loss and Bariatric Surgery at Haywood Hospital, esteemed <laughs> author of My Hungry Head. <laughs> you so can funny. find that uh, at, at pretty much every retail outlet, so Amazon has it, Barnes & Noble has it. It's a, it's a great resource. I'll also put in that gratuitous plug for Sugar, Salt, Fat, which I think yes, is another Yes, by Michael book. Moss. Um, if you're thinking about it, if you're struggling um, with weight loss and you've decided that you need some help and support, the center can provide that for you. Mm -hmm. Just know and understand that there's a process. Um, you can't go to a meeting and the next day expect surgery. That, uh, right. But the process is there to support you long term um, and ensure that you're successful over the rest of your life. Mary Beth, uh, mm -hmm. you talked about something about food and mm -hmm. the two things that people should consider when eating food. Um, whether it is, can you, do you remember, know what I'm speaking about? <laughs> I think I do know mm -hmm. what you're speaking about. So when you're eating food, um, this is part of my hungry head, when you're eating food, it's really about satisfying your body. Um, don't eat foods that you hate <laughs> just right. because somebody told you to eat those foods. Um, so finding foods that you you're, um, enjoy and, and learning the ability to feel satisfied, how you've had enough. Yep. And so you what don't enough feel sick means. Or, yep. Right. What does enough mean for you? And how do you get a sense of what enough feels like? Two um, great principles and yes. easy principles. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, Mary Beth Sharon, thank you for being here. We thank appreciate you, it. 978 630 6130 is the number for the Center for Weight Loss and Bariatric Surgery at Haywood Hospital. Our main number is 978 632 3420. If you are interested in getting information, you can go to Haywood's website, www.haywood.org, and you can find all information not only about the Center for weight loss and bariatric surgery, but some of our other centers, centers for diabetes, uh, excellence, and 
um, other programs that Hayward does. We have a, a ton of support groups, so if you're interested, please sign on. Visit our website uh, and learn more. I'm Mike Ellis. This has been uh, Haywood Healthy. We'll be back next month with some folks from the Center for Wound Care at Haywood Hospital and uh, providing information about the resources that are there for folks that, again, are suffering uh, with mm -hmm. these chronic conditions. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next month.